Hello again. These um, series are called uh, Lives for Teenagers and this is number three and it's about parents. And uh, hi Sylvia, good to see you. And um, parents, parents, yes, what, we can, what can we say about them? Uh, we all have parents or we come from parents if we know them or not. Uh, in a way we are connected to them and intertwined and um, some of you may have beautiful relationships with your parents and some of you don't and um, you must know that most parents uh, do their best to help their children be happy and be wonderful people but your parents have only been taught by their parents how to do this because there's no school for parenting. So um, you must know that in the first zero to seven years of your life, <coughs> you're in this brain state, this brain wave, this length, and they call this theta and or theta. And um, um, you are then very programmable so everything your parents say will be true to you you don't have questions you don't ask yourself is what they're saying really true you just take it in and that's not only what happened to you but this happened also to your parents so actually what they're teaching you is what they were learned or taught by their parents and same for their parents and same for their parents and same for their parents so we actually have a whole line of ancestors before us that still in a way influence us and um, you can often see there are certain habits in families and there are certain beliefs and it might just be that those habits and beliefs are not good for you because you are a different soul and then you may feel trapped or you may feel different or you may feel un, um, not understood. And um, it's hard to live in a um, uh, surrounding where you feel different. Of course, later on you'll say this was good for me because I learned to feel my own truth. I learned to love myself. I learned to create the life I want. And in this feeling different, there was the chance for me to grow. And this will probably work out very nicely. For some of, some of the people it doesn't, but for m many of, of you it does. I remember going to the first kinesiolo uh, kinesiology lessons I ever did. It was called Touch for Health and it was... Uh, with uh, Geno Poys in Barendrecht, a very special lady, a very psychic lady. And she said, children need problems to grow and parents won't give them to them. Hmm. You need some resistance to get some muscles. I've been training a lot l last days, all my muscles ache. <laughs> and um, it's good because you need resistance to become stronger so it's not bad when you have a difficult situation at home but um, uh, and it's not bad because in the contrast so in the not liking the situation you uh, launch rockets of desire this is what Abram Hicks says that's one of my teachers I listen to it every day you can find it on the internet Hicks is with H I C K S and um, what you actually hear is the voice of a lady. She's called Esther Hicks and she's channeling a soul group or source energy as she calls it. And that is called Abraham. And they, she and Jerry, her husband, gave uh, Abraham uh, their last name. So it's Abraham Hicks. And you can find, I think, over 1500 recordings. You just put in Abraham Hicks and then in English the word behind it uh, on which subject you want more information. Hey Willem, good to see you here. Um, and um, um, I cannot read all, all your names guys, so sorry if I don't... Ah, oh, Pauline, 
very good. Good that you're all here. And um, you can listen because a source looks at us people in a very different way. Uh, Abraham talks about um, the law of attraction. So when you think of something, when, well, actually when you think of anything, this is the vibration you are in. This is what you're sending out. And this is what will come back to you. So if you hate your mom and dad and it's unfair and they are always nice to your brother or sister and never to you and you have to work hard and mm, all kinds of things like that, this is what you're projecting. So this comes back again at you. So you make it worse. If on the other hand, you can just start doing what you like. Say you like to draw. Start drawing. Go to your room and draw. Because then you'll calm down and you'll be in a nicer state and you'll be more happy. And when your mom calls because dinner is ready, then you just go down and you're in a good mood. You'll see your mom is a lot nicer to you then. And from the neutrality, you can be thankful that she cooked. If you hadn't, you would be eating toasty again. Again? Not really? Really again? So... Um, then you can be thankful for little things. So today is about looking at our parents, um, feeling the connection you have. So first, remember the first time we talked, it was about loving yourself. Cool. If you love yourself, then you can love others. So do you feel love for your mom? Do you feel love for your dad? Or is it a bit difficult? You can even look a little bit further. How is their relationship with their moms and dads? Is this going smoothly or are there some problems? Oh, guys, oh, you must see this. I'm going to turn the camera on. Just a second. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here at the sea. Look, 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 look. And there, oh, I don't know if you can see it. I, I'll just make it a bit bigger. You see what that is? It's a sailing boat. <laughs> oh, I've sailed many, many years with my children, with my ex-husband. And uh, so I still love it. And I had not seen a sailing boat since I was here. Turn it back. Okay, here I am. <laughs> had to tell you. So these are the little things that make me really happy. <laughs> That's how life works. Or at least in my opinion. Um... Parents, on the other hand, they want the best for their children. And it can be that they want them just to be the way they are. Or they would like to mold them a little bit because they want them to be good at football. Or they want them to be good at playing the violin. Or they want them to be good at school. Um, so parents very often have these projections on their children. And when they're not performing nicely they try, try tend to push them in a certain direction and um, and as a parent having children is very intensive it doesn't it's not only that it wears you out completely moms have a very strange way of looking at life when they become moms First, they were important themselves and then they have children and nothing else matters anymore and they only have children. Okay, uh, which of course is not good for the moms because they're depleted. They're like, uh, they cannot do any more. And um, the children seem very demanding. Um, and something, oh, they're pulling out the sails, lovely. Um, and um, what happens as well your child will probably look a bit like you, react a bit like you. And it might show characteristics that you don't like about yourself. So then your child is in your allergy zone. Remember this? <laughs> so um, very often there's allergy between parents and children and if you probably ask them, these are the people they love best in the whole world. So I believe I need to ask a question now. Can you please react and tell me 
how is your relationship with your parents and um, um, what do you like best about them for example what are you thankful of uh, I for example am very thankful of um, um, of being alive so they have given me life and I'm thankful that they took me on trips and they've inspired me to learn languages learn to speak languages and encounter other people and explore and to always get the best out of me and um, things like that um, what we're going to do now, because I didn't know, normally I know what balance I'm going to do, but we're going to do something that's called delinking. We're going to cut off the ties. Um, you can call it the umbilical cord, so the navelstreng. You were attached to your mom when you were born. Um, today was on uh, uh, Facebook that it's very good for a child uh, when it's born a baby to have the umbilical cord pump until it stops pumping because then uh, the child will have much more iron in its blood than when you cut it off very very short shortly after birth many other things happen um, it's a very natural process in being one with your mom and then realizing that you're actually two and this is very important for relationships later on this is called bonding it's a very good good thing just going to look what you've written here. Hey, Luz. <laughs> they help me with my illness and school and give me all I need to be happy. Wow. This is Kiki, eh? Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, I know your parents. They're kind of wonderful. I've met your brother and he's wonderful too, so... I guess you're you're the lucky ones. <laughs> so you maybe you don't need this, but uh, hey, <laughs> for the other guys who do need this, um, um, we're going to do delinking of the things that bother us, that are keeping us back, that are not allowing us to be in our full potential. Of course, we're going to thank all the beautiful aspects that they also gave us that made us who we are, that made us the wonderful people we are. So, uh, I'm, I think I'm, uh, yeah, we're going to do some sentences. So, you're going to say, I claim my power back. So then you're no longer a victim and you get to decide what you want in life. This is not being disrespectful or not listening to the rules of your parents. But you feel what is good for you. And if they're saying something that is not good for you or it doesn't feel good, then you start talking, not shouting or throwing doors. You say, mom, here, I hear you. I know you want me to do that, but it actually doesn't real, feel real good. I would like to do that. Are you okay with it? You go like a human being, like a grown-up, you're going to discuss this. Um, so I claim my power back and I give you your power back. Because many times parents feel powerless. They don't know what to do to reach their children. I take back what's mine and I give you back what's yours. I forgive you for the pain you've caused me. And I hope you forgive me for the pain I have inflicted upon you. Okay. I wish you all the love of the wo in the world as I wish upon myself. And then you thank. So this we're going to do for all our parents and their parents and their parents, and their parents. This is a never, ever, ever, never, ever ending story. And I'm making this movement, and you may do it with me. You can feel on what layer we still need to do something. So here, we need to do a little bit more of forgiveness. Okay. Um, 
I'll just give you a small example from my life. My father was a very temperamental person, very often very angry. And um, I had to go to my room a lot and he would hit me uh, on my behind. I think he was very stressed. I think he was doing his very best, but he couldn't take no more. So I forgive my father for treating me that way. And maybe he'll forgive me for being, in his opinion, being annoying. <sighs> That's nice. Can you feel it? Okay. And there's a layer here. What can we do here? Here, I think we need a little bit more love. What very often happens is this, that our parents love us a lot, but they don't love themselves so much. So if you don't know what love is, how can you give love? So how about restoring love, love for ourselves? And when our cup is full with love for ourselves, we can give love to others, maybe to your brothers, your sisters, your moms, your dads, your grandparents, if you still have them. Maybe their fathers and mothers are still alive. I remember there was a period that we were four generations. <clears throat> it was wonderful. Okay, so that's more love. And we're going to do a little other thing. We're going to tap on the right side below our breast on our ribs here's our liver and liver has to do with anger and being frustrated and being jealous and actually at forgiving so we're going to say i love and accept myself i respect myself and i think myself worthy <sighs> even when i'm angry with you or with you, or with you, or my mom, or my dad, or my brother, or my sister, or the world, or my teachers, or anybody, or my ancestors. And when I'm angry with me, oh man, we're very often very critical at ourselves. When I'm angry with me, okay. And I love and accept myself, I respect myself, and I think myself worthy. <sighs> when I forgive me, for being in situations that are difficult and I forgive my parents and I forgive their parents and I forgive their parents and their parents and brothers and sisters and all siblings. Ooh, this feels good. Okay, I feel a little bit here on the back. So we'll do it on this side as well. This is the left side and here's your spleen. And this meridian has to do with being worthy. So I love and accept myself. I respect myself and I think myself worthy. Even for a long time, I thought I wasn't worthy of getting love or attention or being fed or being nourished or being caressed or being looked after or being kept safe. And I love and accept myself. I respect myself and think myself worthy when I know that it's my birthright to be loved and to be cherished and taken care of and kept safe and getting all these wonderful compliments and gifts and money and oh, all this attention. Okay. How does it feel now, guys? Oh, we might need to do something for the allergy. Uh, we're going to be tapping here a little bit. This is the meridian of the stomach. And when something or someone gets on your nerves, you feel it in this meridian. So I love and accept myself. I respect myself. And I think myself worthy. When I get annoyed and nervous by my parents pushing me and my teachers and my brothers and sisters and my grandparents and uh, everybody butting in on me and I love and accept myself. I respect myself and I think myself worthy. 
when I can now relax and be nicer to me, kinder to me, more accepting to me. And I know that what I re radiate, what I think of, this is the energy I will, so, will also attract. So I'll have positive thoughts about a good life, <sighs> a calm and relaxed life, exactly the life I want. And then people will treat me differently. Hmm, that's nice. So I think we've cleaned up the thing with parents and their parents and their parents. And I'm going to look for a moment if you have questions for me. Um, <laughs> the goeie slonge moeder, yeah. Say hi to Luz as well. Johan Wakker, that is good. Good to see you. And let's see if there's more questions here. No more questions. If you have still a question about um, what to do with your parents uh, or the way they treat you, I just want to tell the little story for you to understand how habits work in a family. So there's this story of a mom that is cooking with her young daughter and they're eating sausages. And uh, the mom gets the sausages and takes a sharp knife and cuts off the ends of the sausage and then starts frying them. And then the little girl says, Mom, why do you do that? Why do you take those ends off? I don't know, she says. My mom always used to do that, so I think that's how it's supposed to go. No, I was eating with my friend and they were keeping the sausages intact. Okay, let's phone grandma. So, hi mom, it's me. I've just got a question. Why do we cut off the ends of the sausages? And then the grandma starts to laugh. And she says, you have to ask my mom because she always did it. Okay, I'll phone her. So luckily, of course, she was still alive. So she's phoning her, not her mom, but her, her grandmother. And she's saying, hey, grandma, I'm cooking here with my daughter. And we have a question for you. Why do we cut the ends of our sausages? And then the grandma starts to laugh and she says, oh, my dear, really? Are you doing that? Oh, there's no need. But, but grandma, my mom said you told her and 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 now i'm teaching my child why are we doing this no dear really you don't have to do this i did it because i only had a little pan and the sa the sausages wouldn't go in if i left them complete so i would always cut off the ends and then they would fit in isn't that a nice lesson so guys um, ask many questions so if you see your parents do something and you think, hmm, is this the best way to go about it? Is this the way I would do it? What would I do? Ask why they do something. Because maybe they have not invented it themselves. Maybe they have just picked it up from their parents or their school teachers. So, remember from the first time, loving yourself first. <sighs> and when there's a lot of love. There's so much love to give and you'll see that the relationship with you and your parents and your brothers and sisters will be nicer and will be better. And this process of delinking, you can do it anytime you like. You can do it with friends, you can do it with teachers, you can do it with anybody. And the beautiful thing about it is when you have delinked and there's no more stress on the relationships, you can then again make a connection. You can do it with a lying eight or a lazy eight. You can make again the connection in love. And then all the shit that was hanging on it is gone. And your relationship will be much better. So, see you tomorrow.